December 14, 2009, Seattle City Council adopts an ordinance that creates a pilot program for living buildings in Seattle. The Living Building Ordinance encourages up to 12 living buildings to be developed in Seattle. Seattle's land use code doesn't currently allow for the unique characteristics required to meet living building standards. So the City Council gave the Department of Planning and Development the authority to grant developers the flexibility they need to meet project requirements. Living buildings could become the next quantum leap forward in development and based on what we learned from this pilot project, some living building standards could become the new status quo for development. This is the right step for policymakers trying to improve green building standards, but can you still claim it's a living building when only some of the imperatives have been met? You can't pick and choose elements of a flower and still call it a flower. Designing a living building is a huge challenge because the certification process has strict performance standards. The current standard is LEED. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And it's pretty challenging all by itself. You could go for silver, gold, or platinum. With LEED, you select elements from a long checklist of green building practices. Then you construct your building and apply for third-party certification. But you don't have to prove that it still works as a LEED building when, after the architects and builders have cleaned up and gone, real people are actually using the building, plugging in computers, leaving lights on, running the heaters, plugging in fans, or flushing the toilet. In contrast, if you want to meet the living building challenge, you need to adhere to seven criteria. Seven petals of a beautiful flower. Plus, every one of the 20 imperatives associated with them. It's not a checklist. They're imperatives. You have to do them all. Plus, you can't get certified in meeting the living building challenge until you can prove that the systems you design for your building are still performing as designed after one full year of people actually using the building. Here's the big categories, or flower petals, for meeting the living building challenge. Site integrity, zero net water, zero net energy, health, materials, equity, and beauty. The flower metaphor is carefully chosen because a flower is one of nature's little wonders. A school, a home, a big office building, even a whole city, really, if you think about it, should be one of nature's little wonders too. A flower, like our living building, is beautifully designed from locally sourced building materials. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, water. None of the materials used to produce the flower are toxic to the environment. It gets all of the energy it needs from the sun. Solar power. It pulls all of the water it needs from its own local climate, zero net water. And what it doesn't use, the water that runs off its elegant surfaces, gets infiltrated into the ground right on site. And when the life of our flower has completed its full productive cycle, whether the cycle is one season or for a living building, 250 years, all of the construction materials in our flower can be recycled into new products, new soil, new organic compounds, new flowers, new buildings. The process is alive and self-sustaining. It's a living building. February 11th, 2011. Ribbon cutting ceremony for the new science wing for the Birchie School on Capitol Hill. The new building is on track to become the first living building in Washington State seeking to meet all seven flower petals and all of the associated imperatives. Only four living buildings have been certified in the world under the original 1.3 standards. The Birchie School Science Wing is the first project in the world using the 2.0 standards and it's the first project constructed in a busy urban site right here in Seattle. August 29, 2011. Construction crews break ground for the new Bullet Center, a six-story commercial office building in Seattle, on track to meet the Living Building Challenge by October 2013 and become the greenest office building in the world. The Birchie School is one story and only 1,425 square feet. The Bullet Center will be six stories and 50,000 square feet. Here are a few ways the Bullet Center plans to meet the Living Building Challenge 2.0. Flower Petal 
Site integrity. The location will support a pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly, and transit friendly lifestyle. Flower petal, net zero water. Rainwater will be collected on the roof, stored in an underground cistern, and used throughout the building for all water needs, including drinking water, once new laws are passed. Flower petal, net zero energy. A solar array will generate as much electricity as the building uses through net zero metering throughout the year. Flower petal, health. The building will promote health for its occupants with inviting stairways, operable windows, and features to promote walking and resource sharing. Flower petal, materials. The building will not contain any red list hazardous materials, including PVC, cadmium, lead, mercury, and hormone mimicking substances, all of which are commonly found in building components. And the challenge requires as much of the building's materials as possible to be sourced locally. Flower petal, Equity. Unlike many office buildings, large, operable windows will offer fresh air and daylight to all the people who work in the Bullet Center. Flower Petal. Beauty. Stunning architecture, an innovative photovoltaic array, an irresistible exterior glass stairway with awesome views, a green roof and other native plantings, large structural timbers, and a revitalized neighboring pocket park will help beautify the surrounding streetscape. Flower Power. The Bullet Center website is full of additional information about how they plan to meet the seven flower petals of the Living Building Challenge. But to me, the most inspiring element about this whole project is the life story of Dennis Hayes, Executive Director of the Bullet Foundation. Dennis started the first Earth Day back in 1970. Today, Earth Day is the world's most widely observed secular holiday, with 180 different countries participating. When he started Earth Day, he was only 25 years old. That's just a few years older than me.